Have you heard? Tesla slashed prices. Demand has collapsed. Tesla's going bust. The ban on ICE cars will be reversed any day. Well, the hysteria in the media is sickening. Dave Takes It On looks a bit deeper into the huge Tesla price cuts and the launch of their updated Model 3 at a truly remarkable price. Find out what's really going on. The findings are breathtaking. Well, before all you Elon haters click away accusing me of being a Tesla fanboy, this video could equally apply to Apple iPhones, McDonald's, Red Row House Builders, and a large number of other companies and products. Stick around. I'm not going to review this refresh model because I haven't driven it and better people than me already have. Robert Llewellyn on Fully Charged and Matt Watson on CarWow. What I will look at is the engineering and marketing behind the refresh. If you price your products or services too high, you don't sell many or any. If you price them too low, you don't make any money or even make a loss. Our welcome to supply and demand. McDonald's regularly makes special offers, cuts prices, removes products altogether, like the Big Tasty, and introduces new items. This is normal business. Red Row house builders will slash the house prices on sites with just a few remaining units left unsold. Maybe no payments for the first year, free conservatory and the like. Well, Tesla's no different. But the recent price cuts and the launch price of the refresh Model 3 are in a different league. The media and legacy auto have for years criticised Tesla for having too few models and no refreshes. So, this is the first major refresh since around 2017 when the Model S was refreshed. So what has changed? Why is it important? OK, first spoiler. The battery and drivetrain are totally unchanged, and rightly so. The range, therefore, should be the same. But it isn't. The bodywork is not hugely, hugely changed. It's still clearly a Tesla Model 3. So where does this genius come in? Let's take a look at the lights. Front lights are much neater, but the huge difference is that the headlights, side lights, fog lights and indicators are now all in the same fitting. And a look at the rear finds exactly the same. The split units on the old model are replaced with a single unit mounted on the boot lid. Big deal, I hear you say. Don't like it, or love it. That's not the reason for the change. Think cost of production. What has Tesla done? On the front, they have now dramatically reduced the size and weight of the wiring loom. Before, the loom needed to supply separate power to the headlights and to the indicators and to the fog lights. That's a considerable weight and cost saving, plus a much quicker installation time. One wiring plug for each corner of the car, that's it. If that knocks off even two or three minutes, the production line spits cars out at a faster pace and they're lighter and cheaper. That's a significant move. Most legacy automakers make their re refresh models even more complex, with even more physical features and goodies to justify why someone should upgrade and how they can justify the price increase they will slap on the refresh model. The refresh is nothing about making it different. It is all about making it better but cheaper. Now, many people found the old model a bit noisy. I certainly did, compared to my Model S. So, with some of the savings, they've now added sound deadening glass to all windows, and the inter internal materials are chosen for their sound deadening properties. So, saving number two, choice. Oh, traditional legacy companies like BMW revel in their choice of specs. You're able to tailor your car pretty much to your own personal tastes. So you might have three different models to choose from, but then each one has a multitude of additional options, different motors, different battery pack size, different headline colours, different carpet colours, door colour trim, seat colours, boot lining, wheels, to name just a few. And this all costs them money. They need to hold in stock or pre-order a range of materials and products and then programme into the, them into the production line on an order-by-order order basis. This costs them money, but more importantly, dramatically slows down the production rate. Tesla offers naff all in comparison. 
Choose white seats, everything else is what you get. Choose black, ditto. Every single car on the Tesla production line gets white or black interior. Quicker, cheaper, simpler. The same with the engines. Order a basic model, you get one battery, one motor. Order a long range, you get a bigger battery and two motors. Order a performance, you get two bigger motors, but the same battery. So incredibly simple and quick and cheap. Two different battery sizes, two different motors. Now, a quick look through the BMW i4 online ordering reveals an absolute mass of options. Then there's those optional packs. These are killers. Don't like the cheap lights we fit? Well, pay £1,500 and get decent lights. Don't like the cheap wheels? Then £1,100 gets you better. But if you want the best, well, sorry, you can't get them on this model. Go back to the start, choose the next model up, which is dearer, and you get more choice. Want a better stereo? Sorry, that option's not available on this model. Go back to the start, select the next model up for an additional £4,000, and you then get an option to choose a better stereo. Obviously, for an extra cost. Is this really the way they treat their customers? Well, Tesla make it simpler, quicker and cheaper. You want better lights? Sorry, the ones on the basic model are exactly the same as the ones on the top of the range. They're the best we offer. No option available. Want a better stereo? Sorry, no choice. You get the best one on all models. You want better seats? No option. All models have the same. How about that rear screen for the kids to play on? Sorry, they're included as standard on every model, even the basic. Better soundproofing? <laughs> Sorry again, all models get the same. The best. Ventilated seats? Standard on all models. Wireless phone charging? Standard. Now this gives Tesla enormous cost savings per vehicle and a massive increase in production line speed. Teslas rattle through approximately four times faster than VWs. So in economic terms, if a given size of factory costs, say, X million to build and run, then the cost per vehicle, the fixed overheads, is a quarter as much for a Tesla than for a Volkswagen. Tesla make cheaper cars, cheaper. But as all have the top of the range lights, battery seats, etc., they represent much greater value for money. Cheaper and better is rare elsewhere, but standard for Tesla. OK, next item that's really changed is the battery pack. Well, well hang on, hold on. You just said earlier the battery and drivetrain are unchanged. <laughs> yes, they are. Well, let me explain. Recently, Tesla slashed the price of the Model S and X by about 30%, an absolutely huge amount, dropping the Model S down to around $75,000. This is now cheaper than a much smaller, slower, inferior BMW iX4 or a Mustang Mach-E. It is also about half the price that the Model S launched at over 10 years ago. I think this is genius. They fit one single battery size and software limit the power to suit the model selected. Oh, it's much cheaper if you only have one component. Every model has it, so mass production drops and the price per unit drops dramatically. Hang on, am I saying that the budget Model S has the same battery pack as the long range? Yeah, exactly that. And I go one further. It probably one day will have exactly the same battery pack as the Model 3. One size battery means you can simplify your production line. You no longer need different bays for different battery sizes, just one for the single size pack. You need less robots, less time switching between different sizes. But that seems ridiculous. It must cost them money. Why would they do it? Well, the answer again is it's cheaper and has two massive but very hidden advantages. Because Tesla make their own batteries, they're added to the vehicle at cost. When others buy the batteries, the cost price to them now includes the profit margin and transport costs of their battery supplier. It's always much dearer. But one fast production line fitting one battery pack is so much quicker than a production line where a car goes off on side routes for different sizes depending on what the customer ordered. Tesla's much faster, so the cars are cheaper. But back to those two advantages. Well, first, think about this. 
A battery pack generally has a mass of battery cells. Mine has around 7,000 individual cells. If my battery pack is actually a 100 kilowatt hour pack, software limited to 85 kilowatt hours, then each cell does less work. No cell is ever charged to 100%. In plain English, a 100 kilowatt hour pack limited to 85 kilowatt hour and charged to 100% has each cell charged to only 85% of its actual capacity. This is really kind to the cells. None of them get stressed, none is ever charged to 100%, even though the car says it is at 100%. This has a number of benefits. First, the cells last longer, so Tesla already has a much lower warranty claim rate than any other manufacturer. Second, as the cells deteriorate, and all cells do, the battery management system simply charges them to a slightly higher state of charge. For example, if the battery pack deteriorates, say, 10% over a certain period, the BMS simply charges each cell now up to 90%. So Tesla warranty claims the trigger once a battery drops below 70% of rated output rarely happens. Well, take the case of an 85% uh, 85 kilowatt hour pack. If that drops below 60 kilowatt hours, that would trigger a warranty claim. But even if the 100 kilowatt hour battery pack has deteriorated by, say, 35% overall, there is still enough to give way more than the 60 kilowatt hour trigger limit. That results in no warranty claim. That is so much cheaper than, say, Ford, which suffers horrendous warranty claims. The dearest in the industry. But of course, there is more. If I find I'm doing more road trips and would like a bigger battery, I can order one from Tesla. I'll pay a set figure, say two, three, maybe four thousand pounds, don't know what it is, and Tesla simply flip a switch and it's there. That is an additional two to four thousand pounds pure profit in the future from an existing car they sold years ago. Well, do they do all this already? I don't know, they're not saying, but I suspect no, not yet but they have confirmed that they are experimenting with a single battery size limited by software. This, in my opinion, is on its way. Is it moral? Well, some will say not. If they fit a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack, you should not have to pay to release what is already there. My counter argument is that I paid a cheaper price for a car with an 85 kilowatt hour battery. I don't care if it's 150 kilowatt or 85, I got 85. Being able to upgrade at a later date without having to replace the whole car is a real bonus to me if that need arises. Well, Tesla has slashed the prices of all its cars and has launched the refresh model at exactly the same price as the old model it replaces. That is genius. It is even cheaper to make than the old model, but they get the same price. That's pure profit. And before it is released, they will slash the price of remaining in-stock models it is replacing. So there will be a real buying spree for those motorists who put saving a load of money ahead of just having the latest model. After all, the old Model 3 was the world's best-selling saloon car until the Model Y arrived. And the Model Y did not replace it because it was a much better car. It replaced it because the Model Y is an SUV hatchback, and more people prefer that practicality to a saloon with a boot. You can't get a chest of drawers into a boot. Well, please continue watching for another 10 seconds and leave me your comments. We want to thank you for watching along as Dave takes it on. And if you like what we do, what we ask of you is to click that like. And subscribe to follow along. I'm Dave.